Fighter, you ready? Combate Global! Oh, what a punch! What an incredible fight! Can you believe what you just saw? We have a champion! Look at that beautiful skyline, the only thing hotter than La Jaula. Uh, maybe right now, beachfront, Miami Beach. It is smoking, we are in the middle of summer. And I think it might be actually a little bit hotter in here as we are getting ready to go. You hear the beats of Los Knockouts laying it down. Jimmy Smith, Rodolfo Roman. Look, this is combat sports. This is live. Uh, some problems with the card. We initially thought we were going to have Rodolfo. A little bit of a last minute illness. Yeah, Daniel Sanchez supposed to fight Georgia Medina. Sanchez got a bit of food poisoning yesterday right after the weigh-ins. Was actually just released from the hospital not too long ago for a short uh, time ago. He started feeling a little better at around 11 a.m. when he was actually eating some jello. So well wishes to Daniel Sanchez. He feels very sad, but I'm sure we'll see him in here very, very soon. Weight cuts are a miserable experience. They're not handled right. There are going to be consequences. So we're going to take you back to a fight you may have missed. It was a banger. Kevin Souza versus Chris Alvidres. That's right, at 155 pounds from earlier this year. Here's our ring announcer. Take it away. Entrando a la jaula, Kevin Sosa. There you see Kevin Sosa, purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, trains out of Fight Ready MMA and Guadalupe Boxing. One thing though, making his pro debut, something I'm a little jealous about. I gotta say, Rodolfo, the amateur system, he's 11 and two as an amateur. Back when I fought, your pro debut was your pro debut. No, 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 this guy's a seasoned amateur. He knows what he's doing. It's crazy when you talk about that because you're able to get that experience here right back in the day. Hey, you wanna fight, jump right in. I mean, that's just how they picked you out. So you're able to get that experience and really set in now the amateur, some of these amateur promotions, top level production the whole nine. So when you get to this level, you're already out there mentally prepared, but it's a stud, fight ready MMA training out there. We know some of the studs out there. We could expect some fireworks from this young man. Uh, he doesn't talk about easy techniques. He talks about spinning stuff. Let's find out about his opponent. Y ahora su oponente, Chris Alvidre. Christopher Alvidres proudly carrying the Mexican and American flags into La Jaula. Speaking about experience, just one and one in MMA, but four Muay Thai titles, one in MMA. His combined amateur record, 13 and 0, seven knockouts, two submissions. The guy has great stand-up ability. Trained with Tony Ferguson, Black House MMA. But here in Miami, got ready with the Goat Shed. We know how red hot that team is right now. So many great fighters in Combate Global from there. Stepping into the Jaula for the third time. Made his debut with Combate Global. Fast paced, great hands. And as you mentioned, you know, training with the likes of Tony Ferguson and Goat Shed Academy. When I've seen some of these guys that have competed in La Jaula, man, they just, they're different type of people when they walk in there, all the training they get. Brashness, right? That's part of the Goat Shed team. They want you to believe in yourself as much as they believe in you. And it shows every time they walk into La Jaula. This young man is ready. And look at the head to head, both of them young, 25, 26, both six foot. Tall for the weight class, a slight reach advantage for Kevin Souza. Omar, get us going. Y ahora estamos listos para este combate pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la división de peso ligero. We are ready for this bout at the three rounds of five minutes in the lightweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are Richard Green Jr., Ricardo Celis, Dorian Mirasola. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, el momento ha llegado para un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, introducing out of the blue corner. Haciendo su debut profesional, making his pro debut. 
vistiendo todo de rojo he's wearing red registró un peso oficial de 154.6 libras he registered an official weight of 154.6 pounds es de Guadalupe Arizona Kevin Sheesh so Y ahora su oponente en la esquina roja. Now his opponent in the red corner. Sube a la jaula con récord de una victoria y una derrota. He steps in into the cage with record of one victory and one loss. Vistiendo azul, he's wearing blue. Registró un peso oficial de 156.8 libras. He stepped in at an official weight of 155.8 pounds. Es de San Pedro, California y representa a México. Chris, the newborn. El referee para este evento, Christopher Minioki. All right, gentlemen, bring it in. Let's have a good, clean fight. Quiero una pelea limpia. I want you to listen to my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Quiero que escucharme y protectarte todo el tiempo. If you want to touch gloves, go ahead, do it now. Good luck to both of you. Buena suerte. Back up. Back Ready up. to go. Round back number up. one, Kevin down. Sosa. Making his pro debut in the red, taking on Christopher Alvidres in the blue. One and one, just getting started in his career. Fighter, are you ready? Fight! We are underway, round number one. Yeah, Alvidres made his debut in Combat Run back in uh, last year of June. Defeated his opponent, Jose Matus, by Weir Rene Kachok, and then came back in August of last year. Defeated by Gabriel Mazzetti by way of decision. He's a flashy fighter, very fun to watch. Anytime you're trying out the Showtime kick in the first minute of round number one, you don't Peter's have to fun. say flash. <laughs> you're, you're in there to have some fun. The Al proof is in the pudding. Alvidres coming out with that karate style, wide open with the hands, but now on the ground in guillotine position, but no hips. As we say, no guard, no guillotine, and Sosa inside control. So, so though he's no slouch, he says he himself has some slashiness to bring inside La Hala. Just got to get that right timing, of course. But no opportunities right here. The flashiness that's going to be down on the ground, Jimmy. Elvidres now going hard for the Kimura, only in half guard position. Hard to finish from here. Very hard position. Good thing that's benefiting them, Jimmy, is very early into the fight, so no sweat comes into play. Now going Kimura trapped to the arm bar. Sosa right now on the defense, even though he's on top. Yeah. Got to pull that left arm out, shoulder first. Nice, tight arm bar. This might be over quick. Good way of spinning around. Yeah, Sosa, putting that arm out. Good escape, stepping over, releasing that pressure on the elbow, back to the feet. That's you talk about that experience getting the amateurs. Jimmy. Both fighters talked about what they wanted to throw on the feet, right? The unorthodox strikes, the spinning moves, but a lot of grappling so far, two minutes into round number one. Slow down any opportunities of that flash to take place, especially in this position. Nice elbow to throw it in there. Vidra is now getting some distance, going back to that unorthodox stance of his. You fight the orthodox fighters, Jimmy. No, no matter how much you practice in the gym, they can really throw you off. It's just a matter of really picking up that quick adjustment. And that in itself is something you need to practice. Now Vidra is now throwing with confidence. A cut looks like over the right eye, maybe, of Kevin Sosa. Nice right, combination her. straight down the pipe. He's fast with that lead hand, Rodolfo. Oh, there's oh, that beautiful back. knee. Caught Sosa. Looks like any one particular shot is rocking Sosa yet. He's trying to stay with it, but yeah, great he's way yet to really Sosa. find his own offense. Yeah. Good way for Sosa to pick up that right leg and trying to scoop him up for a takedown, but good way of just preventing him taking him down. So far, hasn't really found a, a, a counter for the offense of Alvidres. Alvidres so far has been the initiator with that long jab and straight left. So now in the southpaw stance, now back to orthodox. Yeah, Sosa though already bloodied. Oh, Great good right, right hand. hand. Looks like Alvidrez has that defensive timing. He's catching Sosa right when he's opening up. Sosa just 
leaving the left hand down, exposing his chin. Yeah, I think he may have come in here underestimating the speed of Alvidrez. Yeah, Alvidrez really picking up the pace here. He's the one that's setting up this fight, determining where it wants to go. And they, oh, oh, great statement. Good yeah. power shot followed by the power kick, the young man from San Pedro. Showing a ton of confidence so far in La Jaula. Just a bit puzzled, Jimmy. Hasn't really figured out. Avi Drez, Avi Drez just keeps coming in offensively. Oh, beautiful kick. This might be the end. Beautiful combination again by Avi Drez. Throwing bombs. But kudos to Sosa having that resiliency to still stay in the game. We're gonna stay with it, keeping his hands up, but he has been under attack. 30 seconds left in round number one. I think he consider a moral victory to see the bell at this point. I mean, just chasing him down. Good way of Sosa now finally taking him down. Working on something here. Yeah, good body lock takedown into that easy sweep though, right into the triangle. Coming on, 15 seconds left in round number one. Sosa might be able to get something done from his back, but hard to do with his position pressed up against the fence. It has been a one-sided round number one for Christopher Alvidrez. Okay, yeah, here, come on, 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 Locking yeah. him just like he wants it. When you get him down, you got a whole position, stay heavy. He's gonna come and strike you right now. You have to circle. Let's go up, up. And you can't go in hands. You can't go in hands. You have to go back. You have to go back. Welcome back inside La Jaula here at Combate Global. Christopher Alvidres in the blue. Kevin Sosa in the red. It has been all Alvidres, the advice in the corner for Sosa. A lot of it defensive. Hold him down, put the weight on him, slow this fight down. It's Alvidres, target practice in round number one. Yeah, he's the one just controlling the fight, but Sosa in the end of that round just leaking like a broken faucet. Good ways. Cut man there, shutting down that cut. Alvidres is gonna take advantage of it, but yeah, grappling is... Definitely the key here for Sosa if he wants to obtain that first pro victory. Alvidrez right now, I mean, everything going his way. A lot of, you know, stance switches and working the jab effectively from both sides. It's like seamless when he's going from southpaw to orthodox. That's not easy to do. Yeah, and he almost got that, like, almost like a Steven Wonderboy type of stance. Very flashy, karate-ish. Which only some can really get by that, you know, because just, just the, the, there's a method and means of how to use that type of stance. Offensively and defensively, it is challenging, but Alvidrez, so far, remember, just one and one in his MMA career is doing an incredible job. Sosa has been on his back foot. He's been against La Jaula. You talked about his guts in round number one. He's gonna need a lot more of it. We're only in round number two. So good, close to 10 minutes left. Oh, he tried to go for that elbow right in the pocket, but good way of Adriz reading it. Switch and stance, front kick. Alvidrez is still just hunting Ooh, Sosa down. Good right, right hand. Splitting the guard of Sosa. But you know, Jimmy, how long can Alvidrez keep this pace? You know, he's been very offensive the entire time. Sosa is taking the punches. The open scoring, no surprise here. Chris Alvidrez, 10-9, all three judges' scorecards. 
Yeah, you do wonder about that, but you don't want to be Sosa sitting there going, boy, I hope he slows down at some point. <laughs> you can't rely on your opponent's yeah. inability to You can only take so going. much, right? <laughs> yep. And you know as well as I do, when things are going well, you have a lot of gas. You know, when things are going well, it seems like, boy, your gas tank lasts a lot longer. But just like that, you can get a flat tire, Jim. It's just so true. <laughs> so true. Just the offense. You're getting very, what I like, Bobby, there's a lot of confidence in there. But you got to try to finish it. You know you have the upper hand here. Don't leave it to the judges. It's for the most part, it's all been you. Yeah, but it has to be feeling good about his offense so far. But these moments when he attacks, Souza just hasn't been able to seize on the countering opportunity. He's become a bit of a spectator when Alvida starts throwing punches and starts getting his volume going. On the defense, he's attempting to take down whatever he gets as soon as he gets to the ground. Alvida just finds the opportunity to just turn it over. Zvita is taking a little bit of a risk, getting in on the flying knee, and no counter from Souza. Not what he's just taking it. No counter, no movement. Rodolfo, I mean, you've got to take advantage of those leaps. Your opponent right. comes running at you, stop him with something, and hasn't really put anything in the way. You can't just take it. You gotta do something with it. Would be Souza looking to load the big counter shot. Hits Alvidrez coming in, but Alvidrez so far has mastered the range of this fight. And that's what I was saying. He's giving him way too much range. He's not coming in, trying to crop, stop him. You hear the corner saying, Kevin, got to get him down. This stand-up battle does not favor him. And you know, he's not using any fainting here, Jimmy. That could also help him out. Nothing from Sosa on that. Not taking him away. Not keeping him guessing at all. And low blow there, getting a time called out by the referee. I mean, a little bit of a break for Sosa, but you talked about the gas of yeah. Alvidrez getting yeah. a little bit of a break. Yeah. You know, reload, recharge, go back to the offense. He's able to take down and use this opportunity, but just right and smack that. Shot. Ooh. Boom. You hear that pop of the cup. Your Sosa, take as much time as you can. Try to maybe slow down the offense of Alvidrez. Enjoy it a little as bit much of a break. as you can. And that's in a way for Alvidrez to stop his momentum, but that's short. They didn't take advantage of it. Taking less than 30 seconds. It's Kevin Sosa got to admire, admire his guts. Oh, reaching takedown, a little bit of a single leg. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh. Alvidrez just hanging on for yeah. a second. And then going back to what's working, which has been the stand-up offense. So also they're just standing up way too much in the stand. It's not going just the big. The experienced amateur kickboxer making the transition to MMA where he is one and one. And so far looking fantastic. Easy really nice. double leg takedown. This is what Kevin Sosa's corner wanted. They wanted him on top. Now he's on the bottom. A good chance here for Avi Drez. Take some shots. Good way of positioning his head. Sneaking in that punch underneath the armpit. Keep the pressure. Take his hips away. Yes, yes, yes. Take the hips away. Control yours. Control it. Yep. Scoop it. Scoop it. All the way up, all the way down. The slam. And we end round two like we ended round number one. Alvidrez on the attack. You don't need to. Win that round. I know. One more. Look, keep it simple right there, man. Are you trying to finish it? Okay. You have a better, if you're really trying to take him down, make sure he's on the cage so you can work off the cage. Okay. Right. Stop trying to lift him. Yeah, I know. Just take his hips away. We're burning a lot of energy doing that. Okay. Your body shots are working. Keep keep the jab. Stay busy with the jab. You spit on the joints, man. Why you spit on the jail? Okay. Stay busy with your jab. Stay busy with your jab. Come on, okay. Let's go. Up, up, up. Hey, I need you up. I need you to stand up. Right now. Welcome back to Combate Global. So far, 
Looks like a perfect game being pitched by Christopher Alvidrez, one and one in his MMA career. See him in the blue, Kevin Sosa in the red in his debut. And this is where you start making choices, Rodolfo, because Christopher Alvidrez, uh, his corner said, I know you want to finish him. Don't be stupid, right? I mean, we have open scoring. We'll right. know in a moment. I would be amazed if it isn't two rounds to none for Christopher Alvidrez. In fact, it would be a robbery if he isn't. Hey, do I want to get this guy out of here, or am I content to, to, to pot shot and, and see the final bell? And just what you have been talking about in the second round, don't waste yourself out. Just put an end to it. Starting off with combinations, just like he did in the first two rounds. Alvidrez seeing everything go his way when it comes to the stand-up, where most of this fight has taken place. It's been on the feet. Yeah, so this is not just making any adjustments whatsoever. He's been the same mirror image of the first and second round. You pointed out, not a lot of jabs, not a lot of feints, not, not a lot of attempts to catch Alvidrez coming in, even though he has taken some risks to close distance. Yeah, he's a standing target, Jimmy. Do not expect Alvidrez to change the script if he doesn't have to. Solidly in control of this fight. Once again, we have open scoring. We should know in a moment how it's going. But Alvidrez, a wipeout, first two rounds. And he's calling him and he wants him to exchange. And I get it, but you've been at it already 10 minutes. You know he's not going to do it. You got to take precedence of that. Do it for yourself. These unorthodox combinations. You compared him, Rodolfo, to Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, one of the most unorthodox fighters in MMA history. Karate stance, hand to foot, foot to hand, constantly chaining his attacks together. And there it is, no surprise at all. Chris Alvidres up two rounds to none over Kevin Sosa. Alvidres not trying to take that yeah. slam. And you mentioned it during Into that Into the guillotine, however. Oh, he got caught. Not full guard, it's only half guard. Trying to put pressure on the back and get it done. You can finish from here. Going to take the hips, got to push down with that right leg, but popping his head out. That could have been the last opportunity for Kevin Sosa. Alvidres now on the attack. This could be it, Jimmy. He has a good positioning here. Use that cage, that holla to press his back, work the ground and pound. Not taking any weight off the hips. Control the hips, control your opponent. That's exactly what Alvidrez is doing. Looking almost for that crucifix position, trying to hook the arm. There's no desperation. Oh, the fireman's carry yeah, a little there. bit. Stopped. A little bit, a little bit, a bit of a, almost a splatal position, but. You know, that's one of the things you have to think about. If, if, if you're Alvidrez, hey, man, I don't have to rush anything. I don't have to get, you know, work the good position, keep weight on my man. I got two minutes left to go. That's how you learn to fight like a veteran. Now isolating the arm, going for the arm bar. Good escape so far from Sosa. He is out of arm bar danger for the time being. Yeah, right now, Alvidrez push himself out. Open right there into triangle. Nice transition from his back. Now Uma Plata. Don't grab his shorts. Don't grab his shorts. Oh, 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 oh. Right here, Toho. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Hit him, Ted. Right here, Toho. Oh, oh. Right there. Go, Ted. Get it, get it, get it. Come on, Ted. So also just moving desperately as well. But well, it's all or nothing now. We see that desperation leg lock. Minute 15 left in round number three in a fight where Alvidrez has been absolutely dominating on the feet and on the ground. Spinning for the knee bar. You know, Alvidrez has got to give him credit. He has this one on points, and he's still trying to finish. He's trying to, right, he's trying to fit, and he's not doing it with a strike. He's doing it on the ground. Problem is, he can eat some of that ground and pound in response. Solza now in full mount, best position he's had in this fight. With 40 se 45 seconds left, can he turn it around? Wow, Solza could pull in a surprise. One big mistake. And he's giving his back, Jimmy. Unbelievable turnaround this would be if Kevin Souza Holy able cow. to steal this victory with 30 seconds left. Yeah, for the rear naked, Alvidrez can get. Alvidrez now trying to protect his neck, protect the lead. 20 seconds left in round number three. We talked about that gas. 
It's almost down and empty in here. That's why we're, our view just finds himself in that position, Jimmy. Only takes one mistake, under 10 seconds left. Looks like Alvidrez will see the final bell and the victory. It was hard fought. We saw heart from Kevin Sosa, but Christopher Alvidrez, great performance in only his third pro fight. A little too late though for Alvidrez, for Sosa. Like seeing the comeback, like seeing the drama. Great performance from Alvidrez. We'll get the details right after this. Great performance, his third pro fight. Kevin Sosa made it interesting. Omar, give us the details, buddy. Después de tres asaltos de mucha más acción, vamos a las tarjetas. After three rounds of mucha más acción, we go to the scorecards. Judge Richard Green sees the fight. 27-30. Judge Ricardo Selly sees the fight. 29-28. Judge Dorian Mirasola sees the fight. 29-28. All in favor to the winner. Todos a favor del ganador. Por decisión unánime. Christopher You love a fight with an up-and-comer where they have a great performance, but there were mistakes made. There are things you can go back to the gym and go, you know what, the last 30 seconds, you can't lose mental focus. As good as he looked tonight, I think he comes back even stronger. You gotta know when to put an end to the fight. Don't leave it to the judges, even if you know you're waiting the entire fight. Also, controlling the pace, the stamina, how to use it, how to control that, that's key. And they had a great performance tonight, and there'll be more of them tonight. Of course, the ladies getting ready to go in La Jaula. It is Katie Perez versus Melissa Gomez. When we return at Combate Global, 106 pounds, they leave everything in La Jaula. You'll see right after this. Welcome back to Combate Global. We have a great one ready for you. Katie Perez versus Melissa Gomez. 106. That's right. Beatrice will get us started. And La Jaula. Let's get it going. Entrando La Jaula. Katie Perez. When we were talking about this fight earlier tonight, you called her a wild woman. Oh, Katie man. Perez, is, she steps forward with reckless abandon, never fears anyone in La Jaula. That's what she brings every time. Now, she's got the technique, brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. She focuses every time on sharpening her skills, four and one as an amateur. Uh, she knows what she's doing there, but it's the attitude she brings. You don't see that every time. This woman is a warrior. Every yeah. time she comes in, she comes to fight. For her, there is no easy fight. She's yeah. gonna bring everything to you, hence the name, La Máquina Asesina. The, the assassin machine. And the last time we saw her compete inside La Hala, she brought everything that she could against a very strong and powerful Jay Duran. She went the distance, but boy, she had grit, and she had a lot of tenacious, a lot of strength, and no quit in her. Against a very technical kickboxer in yep. Jay Duran, she had no trouble going toe to toe. I see the same thing happening tonight. Let's bring her opponent in. Her opponent, Melissa Gomez. There she is from Santiago, Chile. Melissa Gomez, blue belt in jiu-jitsu. She is no surprise considering the weight class, considering her look, considering her aggression. Big fan of Rose Namajunas, right? right? Aggressive, lanky, strong. I see those same kind of qualities in Gomez. 
said when she was fighting in Chile, she was doing jiu-jitsu tournaments. They didn't have any women. I had to fight men. That was the way it goes. I fear no one. I fear nothing. Similar attitude to her opponent. Similar attitude. It's a different opponent for Katie because she fought the kickboxer, but what stands out about Gomez is her striking. Yeah. And it's very unorthodox. She can really come from different angles. Very good footwork. And that she's very consistent, will follow you through, will not go down, and find the right opening to hit the right strike. This kind of fight for Adolfo is about who isn't on their back foot. Right. Both these guys like to be aggressive. Yep. Yep. They like to step forward. They're not exactly slip and rip, you know, uh, time. Both offense. Yeah, this is not Pernell Whitaker for the old school no. boxing fans. <laughs> this is one of those moving forward, throwing big shots, daring your opponent to step forward and meet you in the center of La Jaula. That's the kind of fight we're going to get tonight. Which is bound to be a recipe for a lot of fun. Take a look at the head to head, 30 to 32. Same height, same reach, weight almost exactly the same. Difference is going to be in attitude and style, not in the numbers. Beatrice, get us going. Andy Perez, Melissa Gomez, just 106 pounds. Yeah, but ready. Arrancamos con mucha más acción las reglas de la jaula. Tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces, utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo en la división peso átomo de Sbao, in the atom weight division, los jueces son, the judges are, Richard Green Sr., Doria Mirasola, and Jonathan Lane. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un... En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing blue, vestida de azul. Su peso oficial, 105.4 libras, her official weight, 105.4 pounds, with a record of four victories and five losses. Con un record profesional de cuatro victorias y cinco derrotas. De Greensboro, North Carolina. Katy, la máquina asesina, Pérez. En la esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing white, vestida de blanco. Su peso oficial, 106 libras, her official weight, 106 pounds. Tonight, she enters La Jaula undefeated as a pro with three victories esta noche. Entra La Jaula invicta como profesional con tres victorias. From Santiago de Chile, Melissa Go. El referee, Raúl Porrata. To the center, to the center. Obedezca mis órdenes y proteja en todo momento. Obey my command and protect yourselves at all times. Back to your corner. We are ready to go. Katie Perez in the blue from Greensboro, North Carolina, Lisa, taking on Melissa Gomez Lisa, from Santiago, Lisa. Chile in the red and white. And there's the bell, round number one. Yeah, so right from the start, Perez takes a take lead, but Gomez it's a very stick and move, which is the difference between the two. You're seeing it, the switching in the stance right from the start, Jimmy. Very comfortable going from southpaw to orthodox. Back with both eyes, Katie Perez at her best when she brings physical pressure. She has this ability to make the jaula small, right? Not give you a lot of space to work with. When she's had success in the jaula, Katie Perez, that's where it's come from, that physical pressure. Yeah, once that first shot is hit and connects for Katie. I mean, it's just not stop. That's a nice, powerful leg kick. She's there. And Melissa Gomez feeling out with the jab from both sides. Yeah, and Gomez is very smart, doesn't want to go into the pocket with Katie. She knows that that diversity and that footwork is going to be the difference here in the key. She goes up and down in her stance to throw her off. But eventually, uh, Jimmy, she's going to, somebody has to do something here. Strike already. He's been already a minute in here. Oh, there you go. oh boy. what were you saying? Okay, Good there right you go. They heard me. <laughs> right through the center. Goes Melissa Gomez with that big right hand. What I like about Katie, she put that punch and said, oh, you got me, it's cool. Don't expect Katie Perez to back off in the face of any power. Gomez, but almost that Chuck Liddell overhand right, if people remember that one. 
you're going way back to yeah, I remember Ego Wolf Chance, same thing. Overhand you're gonna right get people to go on their Britannica. <laughs> Britannica? Don't even get me started, bro. All right, I appreciate the OGs. That's how Melissa Gomez is fighting right now, those kind of unorthodox winging punches, right? But they hit with a lot of power. Tons of power. Good way of uh, repping in those punches, calculating which is going to strike. Great okay, job, though, from Katie. Katie yeah, Perez looks like trying to figure out the footwork of Gomez. That's what that's yeah. the difference in it. Yeah, she's very quick on those feet, constantly. So the, the key is you got to cut it. You got to cut it. Come in. Also, nothing about Gomez, that kind of shoulder feint. She moves her whole upper body to be really deceptive. Don't know exactly where your opponent is at any one time. And if you're wondering, she has a lot of gas in the tank. She'd go on for three rounds and do that. Not going to gas out. In fact, all her wins have been by decision, only one by split decision. Gomez well, still showing a lot of confidence with those right hands. You know, kudos to Gomez to really perfect that style. I mean, it, it takes a lot. Very difficult. Very difficult. And it is. Dominic Cruz, right? He had Same that deal. quick, yep. awkward stuff, the one that comes into mind right now. Dominic Cruz, he was so great at it, was the volume attack. You never knew exactly where he was coming from. He would overwhelm you in rounds. And Gomez doing a good job of kind of throwing in power shots. Not just about the numbers, but she's putting she behind those right hands. And she uses the range very well. She throws it with overhead. Jiu-Jitsu brown belt going for the takedown. Single leg up against the howl. Good job from Gomez. Stuff in the head. So Perez has the advantage right here. Only saying wrestling, where the head goes, the body goes. <laughs> well, where Perez just getting that leg, not letting it go anywhere. She is tenacious with this single leg, but she's eating some short shots. And she's holding on to that leg like Sunday coupons in the morning. Remember those in the back, back in the day? Oh, now you're talking about me getting old. <laughs> I think, it, I think that's stuff in the net, but it's not the same. Yeah, back to the feet is Melissa Gomez successfully stopping the takedown. They used to cut him in Sunday morning. I remember him well. <laughs> 50 seconds left to go in round number one. Melissa Gomez right now doing a great job with the kickboxing. Fighter from Chile in control. Yeah, Gomez just looks brand, brand new and they're not a dent in her face. Oh, oh, beautiful right hand catching Perez off balance. Yeah. Perez had a nod there. You got yeah, me with Katie a good one. Katie knows that, she, that, that Gomez is packing a lot of power in those punches. But since she switches so fast, it's so hard for Katie to get her down. Because as, as quick as she goes for the single leg or double leg, she's already moving around. Really, oh, 10 seconds in round number one, head kick. Completely losing her balance so far. Melissa Gomez completely in control. Round number one. Oh, good stuff. Don't, don't move. What are you doing? You're seeing everything and you're just not reacting to it. Mm -hmm. All she's looking is big loopy shots. You've got to go under and you've got to drive forwards hard. What are you waiting for? Why are we here? Okay, how are we going to do that? Okay, so do those things. There's no reason for this to be you right now. Yeah. You're just doubting yourself. Trust yourself and ready to go. Good? All right, up and ready to go. Good to go. Got to be in her face. Welcome back to round number two. Katie Perez in the blue, taking on Melissa Gomez in the red and white. Got a little mouse there under the right eye there, Jimmy. I'm surprised it isn't worse, Rodolfo, considering yeah. Gomez did land some power punches in round number one, very much in control. The fighter from Santiago, Chile, against the American, trying to chase her down, but 
the advice uh, Katie Perez got in between rounds from her corner is, is in, in the easier said than done category. You've got to hit her in between those big punches, but you've been playing the movement of Gomez throughout this makes that very, very difficult. It's, a raw, it's about finding the right timing. But Gomez, is, she has fresh legs. She keeps moving around, and it's, and it's every time she's competed here, that's the difficulty other that all her opponents have had. Nice leg kick when she needs it as well. We have open scoring here. People are unaware. And Combate Global, it is 10-9 easy. Melissa Gomez winning first round. All three judges scorecards. I completely agree with that. Corner admonishing Katie Perez saying, hey, look, you're seeing these punches coming. You're just not reacting at the right time. And and, and, and as for Gomez, as whoever's opponent she's facing, you know, it's very frustrating because you can't catch him, right? And it's almost like, come and fight me, but that's your strategy. That's what makes your win. What we say, you can't ask your opponent to fight your kind of fight. You have to make them fight your kind of fight. So far, Katie Perez not able to make Gomez fight her kind of fight. And diving takedown, looking for the double leg way too far outside to make that work. What we haven't seen from Katie Press as well is, is, is a commitment to the leg kick as well. You have an opponent that's moving around a lot, take the legs out from under her, maybe some body work. We've seen none of it. She's trying to derail her, but she just can't find the right set. Not Wait, staying on, trying to derail her. She's not staying on one track. No. Nope. She's moving very, very well. And that's the right timing that she needs to commit to that leg, but good way of Gomez defending that takedown. Great positioning of the hips and taking it to the howler. Working on the clinch. Ending up on the bottom, however, the jiu-jitsu blue belt on top of the brown belt right now, going with that knee slice pass. Gomez wanting nothing to do with the ground game. Very smart, good way of keeping this fight on the feet for Gomez. But you know, knowing that this is your fourth fight, Jimmy, and if I'm confident with my jiu-jitsu, why not test myself? I get it. You want to get that win? I understand. And I know stick to what you're good at. A lot of coaches would say, hey, testing yourself is for the gym. You want to go in there and win as easily as possible. But at the same time, you throw away your opponent because you're not expecting that, right? Good job right now, keeping Katie Perez grounded. Not committing to the ground game, but keeping her from getting up. I'm sure it will be a lot of Any man I can just step in, get her up. Here we are, right back to the kickboxing. He's been the staple of this fight so far with minute 45 left to go in round number two. It's been pretty much a kickboxing match. Gomez been the serious superior kickboxer. Telegraphs those punches, setting him up. And what I really liked about the, the corner of Katie Perez, you know, she's throwing in those goofy punches. You have to find the right timing when to strike it. That's, that's what Katie needs to be very cautious. She needs to wear those binoculars and find out when the right timing is to strike and go for the legs. Good job catching the body kick of Katie Perez. Melissa Gomez, easy trip, easy takedown. You said it in round number one. It's, it, 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 it's the same in round number two. So she looks fresh. Looks like she just got out of bed. Like this fresh. is a, you know, a sparring session so far. As soon as you, you think you have her, boom, she moves out of the way. Yeah, good shoulder movement, good head movement, good footwork. Take down defense, Jane. You can't take that away. But look at the single punches so far from Katie Perez. Her corner is employing her combinations one at a time, won't do it. Another thing against a great mover, throw that third and fourth punch. That's the one that'll catch him. Pot shots aren't going to do it. Damage has already been done. Look at that left leg. That hamstring area. Uh, Perez, though, starting to find a home for that left jab. A few jabs with only 20 seconds left to go in round number two, a round that has been controlled by Melissa Gomez. And you're right, that's one punches are not going to do nothing. You need, one, you need more than two there. Jab has started to work, but still a round number two controlled by Melissa Gomez. We head to round number three. Yeah, vamos a...
vamos a moverlo. ¿ya? Va a querer venir solamente al suelo. Usted tiene que darle pasito atrás y la golpea. ¿ya? Ocupe las piernas, le, le, le tira una bajito. Hacer una mague como que le va a tirar una pierna. Ya, le hace una mague, le hace una mague y le tira. ¿ya? Amáguela. Quiero que la amague. Ya ganamos los dos rounds, los dos primeros rounds. Este round no podemos regalarlo, ¿ok? Nos vamos a mover, nos vamos a golpear, lo preciso y nos movemos. Siempre para el lado derecho. ¿Ah? Amágale con tu derecha, métete. Sí. Toma, toma, toma. Welcome back to round number three. Katie Perez versus Melissa Gomez. You see Katie Perez in the blue. Melissa Gomez from Santiago, Chile in the red and white. Can Katie Perez flip the script? It has been all Melissa Gomez. Based on what you're seeing here, good movement, commitment to the overhand right and power punches. Katie Perez just hasn't been able to find her opponent throughout this fight. And we've been talking about that movement and how much it could take away your energy from the Gomez just came into the third round. Like, if it was just the beginning of the first round, her coach told her, keep doing what you're doing, but keep moving to the right side. Keep throwing the heavy punches. Stick and move, stick and move. Well, if there's good news for Katie Perez, round number two at the end, the jab started working with it. Started touching Gomez a little bit with the jab, but, and you see here, round number three, starting off with a good jab, but we need more than that. Can she add to it? Get to the overhand right. Finally, Katie Perez showing some offensive yet. light. Now she's finding a little groove here. No surprise at all, an open scoring here in Combate Global. Melissa Gomez ahead two rounds to none against Katie Perez. Oh. Perez needing a finish in round number three. Katie tagged her, Jimmy. Gomez felt it. The first time in this fight, Katie Perez is in the driver's seat a bit. Yeah, now notice how Gomez is going backpedaling now instead of going forward. <laughs> Notice that Gomez keeps going towards the right, not much to the left. Going to her right, you can run that jab, you can have that big hook. Good stuff from Gomez, circling out of danger. If Katie were to find the right... Oh! Talk about the right punch! Beautiful left hook from Melissa Gomez. Dropping Katie Perez right to her knees. Oh boy, does Katie have a chin, has a chin. She's been hit many times there. She keeps going at it. And popped back, right back up. Trying to get back on the offensive, but just when it seemed like Katie Perez was starting to have a moment in this fight, man, the power. Melissa Gomez proving to still be there, Rodolfo. <laughs> yeah, Katie just used that left, that jab. Maybe a left hook to catch her derail Gomez. You know, feints could come into play here, Jimmy. Oh, that body shot hurt. Oh, that deep. Yep, right to the body. And Katie Perez in pain at the moment, but can Melissa Gomez capitalize? Back to the center they go. You know, Gomez, the, the power of Gomez, able to so far nullify the offense of Perez. And look at the numbers. No surprise here. Gomez way ahead in significant strikes. Also, much more accurate. Katie Perez going hard for the takedown. Good way of Gomez. Oh, that's it down. Now Perez has that chance. That's the two minutes. And half guard, the jiu-jitsu brown belt on top. Good way of putting in that right leg, yep. grabbing that leg of Gomez, the right one. Blue belt on bottom, trying to get something done in a fight where she has been comfortably ahead the entire time. And there she wants the mount that she wanted. Explosion oh, from Gomez go that. back to her feet. Beautiful timing. Sometimes desperation is exactly what you need, and that's what Gomez had. Gomez doesn't want to stay there. Hit it 15 left. We've got some drama in round number three, Rodolfo. Yeah, <laughs> Gomez, you can see that that stamina is going down, backpedaling, just trying to kill the clock. 
Oh, she got clipped. Katie just got to keep going. Beautiful left hook. Now diving for the takedown. Single leg not happening. Katie, too, a little tired as well. Katie, you got to go. Everything you got. Once again, we know from the open scoring, Gomez has banked rounds one and two. Katie Perez needs a finish, or she will not get the victory tonight. Notice so the volume of Gomez is just it's not there anymore, and she's throwing wild. In fact, that right hand she threw, she forgot her footing there. That's the fatigue in her. Yeah, in the Iranian position, head in the middle, which got to drop your hips to get that to work. So far, not going to happen. 15 seconds left. Gomez staying on her feet. Katie Perez going hard for the down, takedown. Take if she down. gets it, can she capitalize? 10 seconds left. And at this position, very hard, Jimmy. But Katie Perez, we called her a wild woman. We called her aggressive. She showed it in round number three. She never breaks. Could be a case of too little, too late in this case. A lot of hard, a little too late. I'm sure she'll learn a lot from it, but good stuff from both these women. It was a war. We'll find out the particulars when we come back. Welcome to La Jaula. We had a war between Katie Perez and Melissa Gomez. Beatrice Callis, make it official. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. Los jueces Jonathan Lane and Dorian Mirasola entregan tarjetas idénticas de 30 a 27. Judges Jonathan Lane and Dorian Mirasola turning identical scorecards of 30 to 27. Y Richard Green Sr. entrega tarjeta de 29 a 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. Melissa, go! Melissa Gomez moving to 4-0 undefeated in her career. Great aggression, great kickboxing, great angles for the fighter from Chile. Great stuff. Great stuff. Really good. And, and Katie, a lot of heart, just so that tenacity. Great stuff for Gomez. Love the footwork. And more to come tonight. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Combate Global. Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman. Rodolfo, I know we talk for a living, but both of these fighters coming up have a quiet confidence. You got a chance to talk to Christina Pettigrew before the fight tonight. It's that quiet confidence she's gotten since the last time we saw her. Could be a factor tonight. She's coming in. She has more experience than Claudia Villalobos. Villalobos coming in as a professional mixed martial arts, only for the second time. But Dina's not underestimating her opponent. She knows what she's capable of doing. And she said, I've learned to, to really bring down my, my style. What she did with Clyde Zamora, throwing in bombs, did a little work on that at the gym. I'm sure we're going to see a more smart eye, fighting IQ from Tina. Now, Via Lobos, her strategy, come forward, put her opponent on the back foot. You saw the size of Pettigrew, very big for this weight class. But Via Lobos knows if I can get her moving back, I can get traction, I can get momentum. Bank rounds win the fight. Yeah, yes. you don't want to get in the clinch. You don't want to go for the take, get on, on the floor with Tina, because that's what Tina's going to do. As you said, she's a, a bigger girl compared to her opponent. If she clinches you, that could be a very good uh, way of taking this fight for her. Yeah, that's the thing about the physical dominance of Christina Pettigrew. Both these ladies earlier, early in their career, but Pettigrew with the experience advantage also. Look at the age, 12 years older than her opponent, Claudio Villalobos, an inch taller, reach almost exactly the same. They raise, they weighed in the same as well. Beatrice Callas, get us started. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo en la división peso gallo de Sbao. In the bottom weight division, los jueces son the judges are Jonathan Lane, Eliseo Rodriguez, and Richard Green Sr. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Oh, 
En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing white, vestida de blanco. Su peso oficial, 136 libras, her official weight, 136 pounds. With a record of four victories and two losses. Con un record de cuatro victorias y dos derrotas. De San Diego, California, Cristina Perry. En la esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing red, vestida de rojo. Su peso oficial, 136 libras, her official weight, 136 pounds, with a record of one victory and zero losses, con un record de una victoria y cero derrotas. De Santiago, Chile, Claudia Villa. Lobos. El referee, Raúl Borrata. Christina Pettigrew in the blue and white. Taking on Claudio Villalobos in the red. And we are underway, round number one. Pettigrew talked about checking her offense, being a bit more measured in her pace. But you're starting out quickly in round number one. Not really a surprise. No, right from the start, that's exactly how she likes to be selling out the pace. But what really caught my attention, you talk about the, the size difference, Jim. Pettigrew's so strong, so physical at this weight class. Whenever you say you're fighting out of San Diego, I always think Team Alliance, which <laughs> yeah, is where she's is. fighting out of. Dominic Cruz, Angela Overkill Hill. Trains with some Dutch. of the best in the world, Jessica Penne. This is going to be a real test for Claudia. At an, when 11 and 1 as a kickboxer. Make that transition. You know, we talk about these fights, right? With boxers in MMA, kickboxers in MMA. That transition, it takes a long time to really develop all of those martial arts skills, Jimmy. Yeah, timing is different, range is different. Right now, starting on her comfort zone. Villalobos in the red. Villalobos are training with the MMA Masters. Gets a lot of experience. Gets some studs there as well. Yeah, great team out here in South Florida. Likes of Colby Covington fighting out of MMA Masters. And right now, the first real attempt at a takedown. And that's what you don't want to be yep. in Villalobos. We talked about it. Avoid the clinch. Do as much as take down defense as you can. Gina Pettigrew in these clinch condition, in his clinch position, so incredibly strong oh, with those underhooks. Tough. Doesn't need a lot of room to do a lot of damage. You know, a good way though, Via Lobo's getting away from that. She herself has defeated in the holla quite some time. The only woman, Jimmy, to defeat Maritza Sanchez. Yep. We've seen Sanchez here, a stud in Combate Global. That fight goes all the way back to 2019 where Tina rear naked choked Sanchez. Yeah, caught her on the ground, finished her in that fight. Claudia Villalobos, Villalobos trying to use the jab in that southpaw stance. Not easy to do using that, getting that jab over the top. And so far she seems comfortable in there. Only 1-0 as a pro, but as you mentioned, extensive kickboxing background, 11-1 as a pro. Villalobos, if you can really say she's been fight camp for some time. She was uh, scheduled to fight earlier on. Her opponent didn't make way, so she had to take the back seat. Now she's back at it again, of course, for a different opponent now. Yeah, Pettigrew's so active with those legs. Switching up her kicks very, very well. But I'm a little surprised, you know, Pettigrew talked about controlling her pacing and not starting as quickly, but against the opponent who's only fought once, uh, you know, in MMA, sometimes you want to get in there and bully her in those first few minutes, show her that I'm the veteran, I'm coming in here, because every second Villalobos is hanging in this fight, her confidence grows. Right now, she's, she's looking very confident there, taking some risks in the howler with that strong left hand. One of your second pro debut as a mixed martial artist, but you would not know it. So far, it's been in her comfort zone. It's been in kickboxing range. Yeah, she's very, very comfortable in the pocket, there. she's throwing in those bombs. And very crisp, you know, not loopy, on point. 
Pettigrew thought Villalobos would be overwhelmed by the moment. That has not been the case so far. Pettigrew gets two from Villalobos. That just puts a lot of confidence in it. And you'll see Villalobos switches a lot. The righty. She'll switch stance every now and then when she feels that right mo moment. Close first round, one minute left to go. Whoever puts their foot on the gas might own this round in the eyes of the judges. Gina there, that Muay Thai style, the stand up. Oh, good combination from Via Lobos catching uh, Pettigrew coming in. Nice left hook over the top. Pettigrew yet to really. Sh Yet to really step in and, and let it go to yeah. boxing yeah, range. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to think of the same thing at the same time. Right? <laughs> That's a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. They know what we're talking about. Well, they, call, <laughs> well, they call us broadcast partners. <laughs> Pedigree, you know, so far content to kind of work from the outside. Not committing to those inside combinations as of yet. She's trying a lot for the outside kick. And then inside. To stop that. And Pettigrew trying Lynch. to right now ice the round, maybe get the takedown late. Ten seconds left to go, and Via Lobos doing a good job staying on her feet. Right, right. Uh, ends up in her butt, but no time to capitalize for Pettigrew. And we end round number one. You get a fight, boys and girls. Good stuff for both of these women, Jimmy. Yeah, Pettigrew looking technically sound in round number one. Not spending too much gas. Via Lobos not looking intimidated. Both fighters had their moments. Let's take a look here. Via Lobos outside kick. Tina going in for the clinch. She faked that elbow. Good take. But Via Lobos second pro MMA fight. You would not know it coming in with those great stiff shots. Lots of power. Tina with the inside kick. And the clinch. And Jimmy, that's what's going to make the change. If Tina can commit to those clinches and ground game, the opportunity is there. That could be the big difference in Alberto Trujillo, spouse of Tina, on her corner. You know, having your, your spouse or partner on the corner, Jimmy, that just changes the dynamic. You know? And that can be, can be a double edged sword as yep. we begin round number two. Christina Pettigrew in the blue and white, fighting out of San Diego, California. Claudia Villalobos fighting out of Santiago, Chile in the red. Villalobos just getting started in her MMA career, 1-0, and oh, but 11-1 and one as a kickboxer. Gina Pettigrew, 4-2 and two as a pro. Now they, they asked Tina, you know, you're 4-2, and two. You're, she's 1-0, and oh. are you underestimating? Like, well, you, you, you got to remember, Bia Lobos had 12 fights as a pro kickboxer. So yeah, an MMA might be one and one and oh. But this lady has competed in combat sports professionally for some time. Ooh, that combat sports experience that has allowed her to mentally handle tough Pettigrew in round number Ooh. one. Nice hook. Catching Pettigrew coming in. So far, that's been the key to Pettigrew's offense, has been those kicks at long range, working the legs from both sides. But, you know, usually it, the kicks are for setup. you got to follow up, give me something more. Yeah, she hasn't committed up to that second level of combination. Point of that round number one, hasn't committed to the boxing range. Yeah, and it's easier to set the dungeon, because when you do set up those kicks, as we go to the open scoring. No real swell. A little bit of a surprise there. Claudio Villalobos winning it on two judges' scorecards. I thought it might be a little bit math. I kind of thought it would be it the other way around, for uh, two to one. But Claudio Villalobos winning on two judges' scorecards. Remember, this is open scoring. The corners will know the scores. They can tell their fighter, hey, what you were doing around round number one wasn't working. Got to change it up. Back Maybe commit to those punches we've been right. talking about. Yeah. But, but back to the point I was trying to make. You know, Tina's throwing in all those kicks. But it takes a lot of power for those setups. So to follow it up with those punches, you got to be ready to go. Got to be ready to eat some punches in return as well. Walking into the fire against an experienced kickboxer. Ooh. Nice jab. jab. One thing she's done very well, you know, not a lot of southpaws have great jabs, right? It's kind of hard to use over your opponent's shoulder. A jab has been very effective in this fight. Very much of running into Just there it like is. that. Ooh. Beautiful one-two right down the pipe. Ran into it, Jim. 
Good timing also from Villalobos. Gentlemen, we have a fight. We got a fight on our hands. I'm telling you, these girls are picking it up. Very strategical. Yeah, Lobo's only 25 years old. The arm strikes, very, very close. Leg strikes, Pettigrew way ahead. Significant strikes, Pettigrew a big lead, but as we're seeing, Via Lobos can be accurate with those punches. Briefly put Pettigrew on her butt. Judges remember that one. Lots of teams, lots of front kicks for Pettigrew, but not much after, Jimmy. It's how you get in range and what, what you do once you're in range. She's mastered number one. Number two, once she's in range, throwing punches, trying to do some damage. Oh, a little axe kick Beautiful there. axe kick. Great inside kick to the calf, but not much jab. Ran into that jab. Well, that straight right from pretty good. Pretty There's good a good straight one. left. And she's been connecting with that one. And then that hook from Villalobos. Villalobos, the younger fighter, the less experienced fighter, but she's handing her, handling herself like a veteran so far in this round number two. And if you notice, Pettigrew trying to change the levels, faking for the shots to the body, but staying to the top, and that was a takedown. Yeah, she, and you hear Pettigrew's corner stay on her. She has to do that to stop the movement from Pettigrew, from, from uh, Villalobos. Oh, oh beautiful left there. hand. Right over the top as Pettigrew committed to the kick. Man, Claudio Villalobos not giving Christina Pettigrew any room to work in round number Man. two. I'm sure this is your second. Is I don't right. know about this. <laughs> we'll have a Who's pulling her legs Yeah, here. seriously. <laughs> we gotta dig deeper in our research. <laughs> she is not fighting like someone fighting their second fight in MMA. We'll remind you, she's had 12 pro kickboxing matches. And this has been basically a kickboxing match in MMA gloves. Until now, Jim. Yeah, Pedro <laughs> trying for the but once again, five seconds left, right. not enough time to not capitalize. Enough time. End of round number two, Pettigrew getting the takedown. But there's a good chance that we are gonna find out in a couple minutes that she is in a two round hole and needs to get the finish for Christina Pettigrew. Because Villalobos had a great round number two. Yeah, she's been hit with that right hook, stiff jabs, connecting at the right timing. And then now, with the corner staying in, don't, don't get in, in the pocket there. Okay. Not going too over well the the countering, but let the hands go. And she did let those hands go in that second round. You know, I, I gotta say, so so her corner said to avoid the pocket. I think she's doing very well in the pocket. It seems like at punching range, she's doing very very well. But she say it's not a stick and move, you know, yeah. to avoid the clinching and the and the takedown. Because we know that Tina's gonna do that right now. Yeah. That, that, that's her bread and butter to get her, it's gonna get her the win. Thought of round number three, Christina Pettigrew in the blue and white taking on Claudia Villalobos. Villalobos only one and oh in MMA, Pettigrew four and two, but Villalobos fighting in that second round like a veteran. Excellent counter punches, straight right down the pipe, just like that, catching Pettigrew coming in. Put her on her butt multiple times. You're like facing softballs. You're like taking on softballs. First two coaches were southpaws, so I just got used to dealing with okay. southpaws all the time. Didn't bother me at all. Let me throw the right hand a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just, I just got lucky. I saw a lot of them in the gym, and a lot of people don't. Yeah, no, no, they're, they're rare to come. Shout and also Villalobos, you know, has done so well with that jab over the top. That's been the setup for her power shots. And as you know, from by, you know, fighting history, boxing history, not a lot of great jabbers from the southpaw stands. And no surprise here, Claudio Villalobos winning on two judges' scorecards. Yeah, the Lee Howard Davis Jr. always can tell me, if you master the jab, pretty much got it. 
Winky right, Southpaw with a great jab in boxing, for people who remember. You have a great one. Heavyweight champion Michael Moore, but the, yep. the list is pretty short. Oh, Southpaws with great jabs. Pettigrew trying desperately for the takedown. Yeah, you remember how I told you the corner about the point preventing the pocket staying too close to the range? Well, that is why Pettigrew is trying to fish via Loba and take her down. Now remember, the corners are aware of the score. They know that Christina Pettigrew needs a finish in round number three. That or a 10-8 round, get back in this. Lobos very wisely using the Haula to balance, prevent the takedown. Pettigrew is committed to it. Under three minutes left to go in round number three. She's gotten takedowns before, but they've been too late to get anything done. Now, plenty of time if she's able to get it. She's trying to hook that left, that right leg of Villa Lobos, but like you said, great way of using the Haula, good IQ. Using your body, now switching it, getting right back what you want in the center of the hollow to exchange. Great looping. Beautiful. Those punches, man. Nice straight jab, followed by that left hand. Villalobos starting to really take over when it comes to the arm strikes. Yeah, Villalobos looks good out there. She really does. And a good exchanging. That counter, that good countering. But also very, very composed. Your timing is yes. good. Very good at catching Pettigrew coming in. Love it, she even fixed the jab and follows up with the left. Good stuff. Yeah, under two minutes left to go in round number three. The veteran, Christina Pettigrew, oh, the comparative veteran in this fight, hasn't found a way to upset Claudia Villalobos. Hasn't been able to get her off her game for coming up on 14 minutes in this fight. It's almost like she's been a bit conservative. You know, she's been a bit conservative, very cautious. And now we're going to the, but again, as you said, desperate time, tough, desperate matches, but there's just not enough time. Yeah, you're in a, a minute position, and a change. Yeah, you're in a position where if you get the takedown, your opponent can close guard. As long as you don't give up anything stupid, you will see the final bell and you'll win. About a minute to go, Jamie. If Tina wants this victory, she needs to pull the trigger. If you thought Claudia Villalobos, the experienced kickboxer, 11 and one as a pro, would be easy to take down. Pettigrew's finding out that isn't the case tonight. Oh, no, oh nice left the on the pocket way out. There. But right now, Tina's just trying to throw some bombs to see if something lands. She's going for the Hail Mary. But Claudio Villalobos has been tight with the defense as well. Hands high, good movement. Hasn't been an easy target for the attack of Christina Pettigrew. 30 seconds left to go, and a really considerable, considerable upset. I mean, Claudio Villalobos has looked excellent tonight. Exceptionally good in there. A lot of it behind that jab, and another take down, but a little too to late again, Jimmy. Won't be enough time to turn this fight around. It looks like Claudia Villalobos will come out with a major upset. Wow. She is feeling she it tonight. <laughs> That is the look of a happy young woman. Smiling to the sky, Jimmy. Just starting her MMA career under the gun, but she acted like that was her howla tonight. Great job against Christina Pettigrew. Claudia Villalobos, did she do enough to get the win in only her second pro fight? We'll find out right after this. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión unánime. Judges Richard Green Sr. and Jonathan Lane turning identical scorecards of 30 to 27. 30 a 27. And Eliseo Rodriguez turns in 29 to 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. De Chile, Claudia Villalobos. Qué 
This is a performance she will remember for a long time. Claudia Villalobos in only her second pro fight. Great performance against Christina Pettigrew. I'm impressed. You know, it just shows to her that this solidifies the reasoning why she's in La Hala and competing as a professional mixed martial artist. And the tr transitioning has done very well for her. Great way of defending those takedowns, really allowing Tina to be very conservative because of that movement in her feet, that jab, that really was the key in the difference in this fight. But boy, really impressive, because we've seen a lot of these fighters that make that transition from the stand-up to the boxing, from the kickboxing into MMA. They have some difficulties with the defense, with the takedown defense, but boy, Claudia Villalobos, man, he, she just looks exceptionally awesome in there. You look for the in-betweens, right? The timing, the jab, the movement, all of it was on fire tonight for Claudia Villalobos. Significant strikes, she had the lead. It was absolutely unbelievable that she was able to kind of keep the pressure on against a physical monster in Christina right. Pettigrew. Had the takedown defense, had the jab, was careful but powerful with the power shots. Great stuff in only her second fight. Yeah, Tina, the most powerful and the most experienced of the two. But boy, Claudia just looked like she had been there for many, many fights already. Oh, and we are just getting going. Talking about experience, talking about upsets, <laughs> talking about taking on someone who has a lot more fights than you, Santiago Guzman, taking on the incredibly experienced Ivan Castillo. Castillo, of course, stepping into La Jaula for his 40th pro fight. You want to feel this energy? No one else like in La Jaula? Come join us anytime. Uh, welcome back to Combate Global. This is going to be a great one. Santiago Perez versus Ivan Castillo. Big difference in experience, but Perez saying, I am going all out against the veteran. Castillo says he has an edge he doesn't have. We'll see about the edge of Perez right now. Estoy haciendo de todo, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, boxing, kickboxing. Peleo en las dos estancias. Tengo patadas, rodillas, codos. Empecé con dos pérdidas seguidas y pues eso, la verdad, me dio más motivación en mejorar. Ya después gané unas seguidas. La última creo que fue la que me ganó el contrato a combate. Cada oponente, sea quien sea, en mi, en mi mente es el mejor peleador en que me voy a enfrentar en mi carrera. En esa mentalidad me, me cargo cada pelea. Ser padre es lo, lo más hermoso del mundo. Todo lo que hago es por él y por mi mujer y la verdad la única motivación que necesito ahorita. Iván Castillo, sepa que ahí cuando estemos en esa jaula te voy a dar lo máximo que gane el que sea mejor y here we go. Entrando a la jaula, Santiago Guzmán. There he is, Santiago, the Scorpion King, Guzmán. Seven and three as a pro. Fighting out of Houston, Texas. Remember that motivation recently became a father. And, you know, you and I both are Rodolfo. You know, that means no sleep, yep. right? Yep. And your motivations change. What yep. you do and why you do it every single day changes. You talk about the fire it lit under him. That carries into tonight. That's all you need when you have a child. It just changes your mindset. And he has two things, family and fighting. That's it, what he's determined. He mentioned about that in his previous fight, took on Pablo Sabori, defeated him by way of decision. Pablo has competed here in Combate Global, yep. but he's a very elusive fighter, and what really impresses me about this guy is his fighting IQ. He knows how to use his setting where he is very, very intellectually. But his opponent, Ivan Castillo, extremely experienced. Let me know what he had to say. Pues muchos me, me dan carrilla, me dicen que tengo más peleas que años, pero en realidad fue como se dieron las circunstancias, ¿no? Yo debuté al año de haber entrenado MMA, o sea, conforme fui peleando, me fui, fui creciendo y fui agarrando experiencia. Ahorita te puedo decir que estoy 
al 100% física y mentalmente. Se van a llevar la mejor pelea de mi carrera los espectadores, la, la gente que sigue ahí apoyándome. ¡Choco! Pues lo voy a finalizar, hermano. No puedo dejárselo a los jueces otra vez. Tengo que finalizar, sí o sí. Santiago, entrené muy duro y lo vas a ver esta noche. Su oponente, Iván Castillo. There is Iván Choco Castillo. Rodolfo, we all know the fight anybody, anywhere kind of guy. The guy who'll take on anyone at short notice. I'll be on vacation, I'll take a fight. I don't care what weight class it is. There comes a time in all of those fighters' careers when you say, do I want to be that guy? Or do I want to be that next level elite fighter? It seems as though Ivan Castillo has made that decision to become that elite fighter after years of being the anybody, anywhere kind of guy. He said a victory today, it's almost as if He didn't want to say the, the, the actual word, but it almost sense resetting my career, starting brand new. Yes, I have, and this will be my 40th fight, but I'm going to start fresh. It's a brand new him. And look, the guy looks great in shape, fighting at 155. Look who's standing right beside him, none other than Chris Puas Perez. He's been training with him and reinforcing on his jiu-jitsu and his wrestling. And I think that's going to be the key here against Guzman, Jimmy, the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu. This guy is a guy that can really set the pace. He's going to need that. He's going to have to bring in that stamina, that quickness out of him, and set the tone of the fight. That will give him that victory against Guzman. And fighting out of Ensenada, Mexico. Proudly carrying the flag. Usually fights at a 170. He's dropped down to 155. So he's going to make that run. He says, I have 10 more fights left in me. I'm going to retire at 50. Right now it's 40. That run starts tonight. There's no backing down. The head to head. It may seem weird with the fight disparity. Only two years disparity in age. Also two inches in height for Ivan Castillo. Also Guzman missing 155 by five pounds. Will that be a factor? Beatrice, get us started. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Este es el evento estelar de esta noche. We continue with much more action. This is the main event of the evening. División Peso Ligero, Lightweight Division. Los jueces son de Judges are Eliseo Rodríguez, Doria Mirasola y Jonathan Lane. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing red, vestido de rojo, su peso oficial, 160 libras, his official weight, 160 pounds, con un récord profesional de 7 victorias y 3 derrotas, with a pro record, 7 vi victories, and 3 losses. From Houston, Texas, via Palmira, Colombia, Santiago, the Scorpion King, Guzman. En la esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing white, vestido de blanco, su peso oficial, 155.6 libras, his official weight, 155.6 pounds, con un récord de 22 victorias y 17 derrotas, with a record of 22 victories and 17 losses. De Ensenada, Baja California, México, Iván Choco. El referee, George Rogers. We already went over the rules in the locker room. If there's any questions, ask them now. If not, touch them up, back to the corner, wait for the bell. Best of luck, God bless. Simple instructions, Santiago the Scorpion King Guzman in the red trunks versus Ivan Choco Castillo in the white. to see how Castillo is going to come in. If he's going to set the tone right from the start, 
Or is he going to allow Guzman to enjoy the moment here and dictate where this fight goes? Oh, we are underway, round number one. In the last fight, Christina Pettigrew, four and two, upset by Claudio Villalobos. He's only one and zero oh in MMA. He picked up her second MMA victory. You know, you're the veteran. Gotta go in there, maybe bully the new kid, right? And show him this is my howler. Right now, Guzman not fighting intimidated. I school, who doesn't remember that game? Or were you one of those cool guys? I was a cool kid. Ah, oh, darn it. I didn't bully you. Yeah, well, nobody picked on me. They, got, they picked on me. I'll, I'll be honest, no shame. Milan <laughs> <laughs> Castillo stepping into, to, Ooh. stepping into his 40th pro fight in MMA. Insane. Not even 35 years old. Santiago Guzman, beautiful knee. Guzman certainly not fighting intimidated. Both guys throwing leather early in this fight. So Castillo does have that four fight losing streak, but let's just take a look at those fights. They've been against game opponents. Three of those have gone the distance. One of them was pretty much a last minute opponent. He didn't really have any time to really study or know what he was gonna get himself into. So, you know, th there, there's some debate there, but he's put in the work. He has a different mentality, different weight class, so, as he stated, it's almost like restarting his career. Most fighters will fight anyone, anywhere. The records show that, right? They don't have the prep time, don't go through full camps. A lot of times fighting outside of their weight classes. And there's a reason they have those up and down records. And before that, a five fight win streak. So he's been, been kind of streaky in his career as of late. Kind of looking for that consistency and also, you know, three out of four of those losses by decision. You go back to the gym, God, if I just change this one thing, right? If this one round had gone my way, totally different streak we're talking about. Which is what he said, I cannot let this fight go to this. I need to put an end to it fast. Santiago Guzman, so far working hard for the takedown. Good defense by Castillo, but so far Guzman the aggressor. Castillo needs to find that opportunity to take down Guzman. I think the difference will be in the ground game. We've seen that Steel does have that ground and pound. And he's there. He's there it for is. You heard me. Double leg. Oh, oh he made rookie him go mistake for... from Guzman. Giving oh. up his back, looking for the escape. One hook in. Good movement from Guzman, however. Risky move, turning his back for the escape. Oh. Good get out. Good knee shot though from Guzman to the body of Castillo. Castillo felt that one. Guzman now trying to take advantage with some punches. Castillo a bit hurt, so that body oh. oh, nice right hand right. counter. Corner of Castillo is throwing it, telling him to throw that jab and uppercut. That one six, although every every coach has a different tied up for each punch. Oh, yeah. One six, never quite sure. Oh, oh, nice yeah. right hand by Castillo. Pulls him cow. right to the ground. Wow. Guzman right now in all kinds of trouble. Castillo with that right hand shot just put him on his butt. In good presence of mind, following him to the ground. Didn't, didn't give him the space to hop back up again. He's really trapping him around. He's controlling the fight. Guzman, you can see he's having some difficulty trying to figure out Choco. Choco is taking advantage of offensively. Yeah, Guzman right now using that wrestling escape, right? Control the wrists, heavy on the hands, pop back to your feet. Yeah, but good way of yeah. Choco throwing in the body weight of Guzman. One hook in, but good job by Guzman, you know, using the howler to keep him from circling around to get that other hook. Guzman certainly fighting like a veteran. There. Stepping into his 11th pro fight, seven and three so far. You said this would be the difference. It's the ground game of Castillo. Yeah, he's, doing, he's doing exceptionally well right now. He, he grabs him and he's making it very difficult for Guzman to find an opening to escape. Tenacious with the body lock, good takedown. 20 seconds left to go in round number one. That definitely has been the difference now, sizing him uh -oh, up. Uh-oh, both hooks in. 10 oh. seconds left to go in Gosh, round number one. Choco. Guzman, gonna keep his neck safe. Excellent riding by Castillo. 
we finish round number one. To round number two, and excited Ivan Choco Castillo in the white, that, and Santiago Guzman in the red. You know, that first round just had a lot of confidence for Choco, Jimmy. And Guzman already. Ah, uh, these boys want it. Yep, all over Castillo. Corner said, be sure to set it up. You got caught with that shot because you weren't using setups. We were throwing single shots, but no jab in front of it. Choco just threw that overhand right again, Jay. And he's going for that uppercut. Remember how it's poor Choco's corner step, throw in that jab, follow it up with that uppercut. Castillo going for the takedowns where he had success in round number one. Easy double leg. Smooth. Guzman thinking guillotine that will not work from half guard. Good pressure from Castillo. What better way to prepare for a fight when you're training with Juan Perez, who's exceptionally great at yeah, the Yeah, very explosive as well. Castillo starting out round number one. Kind of where he ended round number two, trying to put physical pressure on Guzman. Guzman in guillotine position, but he has his hips behind it a little better this uh -oh. time. It might be it deep. Be, Jimmy. Going for it with the hips. Castillo that, trying to break the wrist, and he does. That's when that experience comes in. No panic there. Able to work the escape by controlling the wrists. Letting Castillo know, if you commit to the double leg, I'll commit to the guillotine. And there's the double leg once again. Tuck that chin in when you go in for that takedown, Chip. No surprise, Ivan Castillo up on all three judges' scorecards. Open scoring here at Combate Global, meaning the corners know the score as well. I'm sure their corner knew that their man Guzman lost round number one. Choco here doing exactly what he did in that first, but he has to go for the finish. Not only is he going to get him that victory, but it's going to boost up his confidence as a fighter. He has said it 40 professional fights. This is 40 tonight. We go to 50. Ten more left in me. That can be a decent run if he starts out with a win tonight. Could get something done in Nahaula. Fair share to retire. <laughs> 50 fights. Not 50 years old. I want to make that abundantly yeah, clear. Right. Yeah. Hasn't really been able to get much more than one hook in throughout this fight. Good riding, as we say, he by has. Castillo. Yeah. And the chances have been there for rear naked chokes, ground and pound. He's been judicious with it, right? He hasn't gone crazy for anything. Right. Been very, very Gosh. smart. Do, yeah, doing just yeah. enough. Keep his opponent down, wear him down with some knees, short punches, not over committing. Wait, waiting for the right moment. You know, what you'd expect from a 40 right. fight veteran, right? Andrea's writing it down, taking it down again. Full control. This is a point, you know, more than halfway through the fight, under two minutes left to go in round number two. You start questioning yourself, right? You start going, this isn't going my way. Everything starts getting heavier. It's where the mental toughness gets tested. Just on the way out. Try to try to get Steve right there. Bring him down. 
it's that tenacious, sticky kind of jiu-jitsu, right? You don't yes. let your opponent off the hook, no space at all. Just keep them at you, right yeah. there. Don't, go, yeah. don't let them go anywhere. Yeah. The shot's doing lots of damage there from that position, Jimmy. Yeah, it's not a dynamic style. It's a style of tenacity. That's what Castillo is using tonight. Trapping him. He's trapped him yep. for a good two minutes of change. Good short punches and Guzman. You know, you gotta wonder at, at what point do you sell out? All right, I might have to give my back for a second, but I gotta pop up out of this position. So far, his guard has simply not been a factor. Not much at all. Still just taking advantage of it, scooping him in once again. Choco's uh, corner telling him that his. Guzman is tired, and he's absolutely right. It is definitely worrying that Guzman. Acostillo has to just lay his body weight on him. Calling for a Kimura, slipped away. The things he teaches in Jiu-Jitsu is you never run out of pressure. Pressure's easy, yep. right? You put your weight on, on yeah, yeah, make them carry you. And the veteran, Ivan Choco Castillo, Fighting like he's gonna pressure his way to victory. 10 seconds left in round number two. Castillo pulling away in this fight. Respira, respira, respira. Bien. Sigue igual. Si te sientes cómodo en el piso, presionando, sigue presionando. ¿Ok? Si te sientes cómodo. Si no, quiero los golpes largos. Los golpes largos. No quiero que te embarres. Quiero velocidad. Ya. ¿Ok? Tú traes muchos rounds aquí. ¿Ok? Acuérdate lo que venimos. Venimos por el regalo. ¿Ok? En esta ronda se va a acabar. No nos vamos a dejar los jueces. Vas a terminar ahorita la pelea. ¿Ok? ¿La vas a terminar? Dale pues. Y te agarra perro. Welcome back to Combate Global. If Ivan Joko Castillo on the right, in the white, were to write a script for this fight, first two rounds have gone perfectly. Don't flip the script, stick to it. Yeah, it's Jimmy. been a veteran kind of fight. Takedown, top pressure, not letting Santiago Guzman off the hook. Guzman seven and three. Choco Castillo, 22 and 17. This is his 40th pro MMA fight, but Guzman still trying to land, still trying to get back in this fight. You know what I liked and I saw from Choco that I haven't seen this previous fight when he got out the stool, he smiled. You can tell that he's having a lot of fun in there. And when you're having fun, Jimmy, it's a whole different type of fight. And this is exactly where Guzman doesn't want to be, up against the fence. Castillo leaning on him. Yeah, his corner told him to go for the open scoring, right for the so. No surprise there, 2017. 10 eight rounds yeah, look at for Ivan Castillo. Beautiful roll to end up Very on nice. top. Yep. Veteran stuff from Ivan Castillo. Yeah, his corner told him, hey, if you feel comfortable on the floor, keep at it. Don't change it. And no surprise that the two judges saw 10 eight in the last round. It was a wipeout round. Easy mount transition. Looking real good for Choco. Right now, he's about to flip that switch. Almost like a reset to his career. That's what he sees tonight as. He says, I've been in the middle far too long. 22 and 17 experience, but never over the top. Never able to establish himself as a real power in MMA. Only 32 years old. He's going to fight 10 more times. That's enough to do some damage in the howl in this weight class. That's enough, what, two, two, three years, by the way, if you look at how many fights he's had in a year? For 50th. His schedule has been absolutely incredible. <laughs> And right now, he's showing that experience tonight. Santiago. Oh, Guzman. there's that rear naked choke, but that chin, though, is down. Yeah, still on the chin. It's possible to crank that, but Castillo not going to waste any energy on that. Trying to go for a half Nelson. Not there, but Guzman, look at that left arm. Good way of positioning, not allowing any guillotine possibilities. Good short punches by Ivan Castillo. 
Scoop him up again, Jimmy. Yeah, Guzman's corner telling him to go, go, go. Easier said than done. <laughs> with all that pressure on him. Ivan Castillo just not giving Santiago Guzman any space at all. Yeah, Guzman has felt that weight from Castillo. Yeah, he's forcing him to give him his back any minute now to push him off a little bit away from La Hala. He wrap those legs, get him in a body lock. And good job so far from Ivan Castillo, not over committing to any one position. It's been almost like a wrestler's ride, right? Not necessarily trying to get the hooks, not trying to sink in any submissions. You know, one hook in, power half Nelson on the opposite side. The kind of, of, of riding just wears you down. Good short punches, no big wind-ups. I don't think any one shot has necessarily hurt Santiago Guzman. It's been death of a thousand cuts so far on the ground. That has been the story of this fight, that ground game from Castillo riding him. As you said, that wrestling. Intent to stay with one hook in. You see the look of frustration on the face of Santiago Guzman. He has had no space in this fight. None whatsoever. And yeah, the veteran Castillo fighting very, very smart. Choco like a Venus flytrap, not letting Guzman go. Been in this position for a very long time. About 70% of the fight, I would say, Jimmy. Uh, if this were a wrestling match, you would have the riding time here. <laughs> Definitely over one minute. Guzman just hasn't had the, the ability to flip the script. Hasn't been able to change this around. Now near side cradle, once again, looking like a wrestling match. Just can't get out. Can't find the opportunity to push those hips up and get this fight to the feet. An incredibly frustrating night for Santiago Guzman so far. But Castillo said, I'm getting back on top with this fight. This is going to be the start of my streak. Man. He has 20 seconds left. That wrestling is on point, Jimmy. Yeah, he so said he didn't want to go to the judges, but if you are going to go to the judges, do it the shutout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pitch the shutout. Yeah. That's what he has done with 10 seconds left to go in round number three. And for that exchange, Ivan Castillo will not be denied. Wow. He sees the final bell in a dominant performance. A fighter from Ensenada, Mexico. His 40th professional mixed martial arts fight. And man, he was great from start to finish. At least one 10-8 round in there. We know that from the open scoring. Welcome back inside La Jaula here at Combate Global. Ivan Castillo, a near flawless performance. Beatrice Callis. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Los jueces Dorian Mirasola y Jonathan Lane entregan tarjetas idénticas de 30 a 26. Jonathan Lane and Doria Mirazara are turning identical scorecards of 30 to 26. And Eliseo Rodriguez, 30 to 27. 30 a 27, Eliseo Rodriguez. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. De sangre mexicana, Ivan Castillo! If you're having fun, you're doing it right. Ivan Castillo, in his 40th pro fight, had fun in there tonight. I, I'm telling you, when I saw, I think it was the second to third round when he got out the stool. Man, stomping, smiling. Like a kid at a candy store, Jimmy. He was happy, excited to be there. It was not work, it was fun. The exchanging, the countering, working that jab to the uppercut, but that was the difference in the fight, the ground game. He said it in the interview, I'm not impressed with Guzman's jiu-jitsu. I got better wrestling, and I'm gonna make sure that I show it off here tonight. And working with the likes of Puas Perez, guys like that will really push you to be the best that you can. He said it, I'm in my 30s, but I feel I am at my peak right now as a big martial artist. I saw a guy hit that can definitely do damage here on Combate Global. Look at the significant strikes. It was an absolute wipeout. Takedowns, 14 Teen. takedowns. To zero. 14 to none. <laughs> 14 to none. A wipeout on the ground for Ivan Castillo. It's exactly what he said. It's like a football score. Tonight.
Two exactly. touchdowns to none. <laughs> exactly. A wipeout for Ivan Castillo. Great stuff. And we are not finished yet. It is one more to go. That's right, Noah, Nasty, Lindsay, Cristobal, Renteria. Want to see him live? This is how you come join us. You hear the beats here in Univision Studios. Combate Global, Noah, Lindsay, taking on Chris Rentaria. Noah, Lindsay, young but hungry. Beatrice, get them started. Entrando a la jaula, Noah Lindsay. I'm allowed to say he's young. You know why? why Anyone that? born when I was in college is young, right? Anyone born? Let me see the date. 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 You know, I was still. Was I still in college? I was still in college at this point, by the way. About to graduate when he was born. Only 23 years old, 4 and 0, young in his career. That's been a theme tonight, yeah. is younger fighters coming in and looking very, very experienced, looking very composed. And La Jaula came here from South Carolina, proudly the American flag over his shoulders. He is ready to go. Well, when you talk about, compared to back in the days, the amateur level in mixed martial arts yeah. is just top notch. Some Five and two as an amateur. Yeah, I mean, it, you get the experience and, and the guys, it, the, I mean, the sport in general has just involved. And this guy's a, a guy that has won some championships as an amateur. He's a stud going in there. No nasty Lindsay. A reason why he's nasty is you'll see a little flashiness, kind of unorthodox to the way that he competes. Good ground game. Should be an exciting debut for this young man. Let's see what the young jiu-jitsu brown belt has as we bring in his opponent. Su oponente, Chris Renteria. Fighting out of Tempe, Arizona, a record of three and two. Coached by Trevor Lolly for this fight. He was training with Team Elevation in Aurora, Colorado. You know how good their cardio is up there. Very, very well-rounded team. This guy comes in. Look at the picture, man. He is a uh, physical man. specimen, all muscle. Yeah, I also put in the work with the uh, Ultimate Combat Fitness. And Jimmy, when you look at this dude, you just say, whoa. I'm going the opposite way with you. This guy's just shredded. <laughs> but a top athlete as a cross-country collegiate athlete. And he's had much success here in La Jaula. First time we saw him was back of, in October of 2021. Defeated Alexander Sanchez by way of rear naked choke. Then took in a fight in 2022 in April. Lost that one, but picked up a decision victory back in March. This guy is just a specimen and a top athlete in there. Now, when you talk about athletics, too, a state champion wrestler. Yep. We'll see if that is a factor tonight. Arizona, of course, known for outstanding wrestling. Arizona State, great team. Zahid Valencia, wrestlers like that, putting it back on the map. And this guy definitely is... Definitely has uh, good crops of wrestlers. <laughs> outstanding. And look at the age difference, 29 years old for Chris Rentaria, 23 years old for Noah Lindsay. A little bit of reach advantage for Rentaria. Beatrice Callis is going to get us started for our final fight of the evening. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. En la división peso ligero, we continue with much more action this bout. In the lightweight division, los jueces son the judges are. Eliseo Rodriguez, Richard Green Sr. y Doria Mirasola. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Yeah. 
En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing blue, vestido de azul. Su peso oficial, 153.2 libras, his official weight, 153.2 pounds. Tonight, he enters la jaula on the fit as a pro with four victories. Esta noche, entra la jaula invicto como profesional. From Traveler's Rest, South Carolina, Noah Nasty Lindsay. En la esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing green, vestido de verde. Su peso oficial, 156 libras, his official weight, 156 pounds. Con un récord profesional de tres victorias y dos derrotas. With a pro record of three victories and two losses. De Tempe, Arizona, Chris Rente. El referee, John Rogers. Bring it in, gentlemen. We already went over the rules in the locker room. If there's any questions, ask them now. If you want to touch gloves, touch them up, go back to the corner, wait for the bell. Best of luck, God bless. You know what, nasty Lindsay from South Carolina in the blue trunks. Mr. Bal Rentaria from Tempe, Arizona in the green. Yeah, what you see from Renteria, he's a fast starter right from the spot. Didn't see East to be very calm and composed, but cool. Fast start, start say something about fast start? Did I you, I, you, you kind of called that one. <laughs> Easy takedown. I read the book, man. From the state <laughs> champion wrestler, Renteria on man. top, trying to use those physical advantages. So this is where Lindsay needs to keep himself very composed. He needs to be relaxed, calm down. Let Renteria do his thing and be on the defense. One of the hardest things to do in MMA is stay composed on the bottom and work your guard. Now, Lindsay does the majority of his victories have come by way of submission, so this is a good shot for him right here. Yes, he is active with his guard. He's gone triangle armbar of Renteria, though. Excellent movement, scrambling, quick start. Being with a strong dude like that in the ground game, Jimmy. That's Rest awful. Oh, dude, it's horrible. <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah, my coach does it to me all the time, and I hate him. <laughs> it's what it is. It's like a rock on you. And the one thing about, you know, wrestling, collegiate wrestling, is, is 3 2 2, right? It's short yeah. rounds. It's yeah. explosive, but it's short. You know, it's, it's Ken Lamentaria, keep the pressure on. Right now, looks like Noah Lindsay trying to get a little bit of space, hitting a back and close guard. Trying to walk up the triangle. Yeah, and this is where Lindsay has that. Good jet. job locking Very it up. Post. You see the arm still trapped from Renteria. <laughs> Renteria has the right arm in so he can create space. Pull out there from right, but there. Yep. Now Noah Lindsay transitioning. Leg lock, maybe sweep position, but. He hasn't been intimidated, he's working his guard well. Renteria now in side control, stepping over a little too early for Mount though. Mount could be a dangerous position for Lindsay here. Now, didn't quite use the setup, however. Ended up losing that Mount position now in riding position. You're taking a guy with, with Renteria because he's a strong dude and he comes so fast and powerful. You're gonna have to take, take a little beating for a while and then carry on. Weather of the storm, right? Yeah. Ride it out a little bit. He's gonna come at you like a cat five, but eventually he's gonna be downgraded to a tropical storm. But you're gonna have to take the wind, you're gonna have to take the rain. Now, I love these Florida, meta Florida metaphors you use. I'm on one today, Jimmy. I'm on one today. You are, you are. I'm on one. Today. Today. I'm on one. You know, downgrading <laughs> category storms. We're talking about Cuban food in a second. There's Noah Lindsay walking up, trying to use his guard offensively. Renteria, though, still bringing the physical pressure. Looks like he can pass to that left side, but content right there to land some ground and pound in half guard. No one shot necessarily doing a ton of damage, but it's like a mountain of boulders coming down on you. Yeah, that's the thing is how much can he take? Those really heavy shots coming from Renteria with a lot of power. Good job, getting back to butterfly guard. Trying to call him up. 
No Lindsay can ten right now do the butt scoop position. Referee's not gonna allow this for very long. I just want you to point out, Rhea, look at that husband and puppy. See, look at that. Used a lot of gas early on in the fight. Minute 37 left in round number one. Noah Lindsay content to stay on his butt. I am a little bit surprised the referee's allowing this. Yeah. Renteria is not doing much. Yeah, referee just said do something. Renteria diving back into guard. Couple good punches there. Oh, Lindsay staying composed, working the butterfly guard, trying to work the sweep there. Great stuff, man. Active guard. Very well. Once again, looking for that triangle. Renteria, the right hand over the top. One minute left in round number one. Renteria, so far the aggressor. Lindsay trying to be defensive with his guard. The way he gets off this end of the round, Renteria, curious to see. Of that volume and energy. Good stuff for Lindsay, just keeping himself very cool, calm, and collected. Like cool like cucumber. Yeah, but some short punches starting to get through from Cristobal Rentaria. Young fighter from Tempe, Arizona, state champion wrestler. That showed early in this fight. Dove right in for the double legs. Been on top pretty much the entire time. Composed guard from Noah Lindsay. He will survive round number one. Can he turn the tide in round number two? That is the question. Come on, come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Papa. You got this. You got it for you. you. He was waiting on that one. He was waiting on that one. Got it on the back. He was waiting on that one. Listen, you move, he went to the ground, he was working. He knows that you were up the ground. You understand? So you got to get out of that. You got to focus. You know what I'm saying? He's got it. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. How you breathing? How you feeling? So good? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Stay focused. You got it. No. Pablo, stay focused. All right? Make him earn everything. Make him earn everything. All right? Every single ball. Right? Mouthpiece, busy mouthpiece. You got it. Get it? Yeah. Good. Okay. Welcome back to Combate Global, round number two. Noah Lindsay in the blue trunks versus Cristobal Rentaria in the green trunks. Renteria definitely made some heavy shots, and Lindsay felt that one. Took him some time to get off. I don't know if he was kind of just trying to compose himself and realize, okay, let me take a deep breath here, relax. Find out, we are underway in round number two. A couple things you're looking for is can he make Renteria work harder for the takedown? The answer is no. Right. Easy takedown. Now it's will he take some risks to get up? Is he content to work from guard mostly in round number one? Came close with a couple triangles, but it gets harder as the fight progresses. Sometimes, you know, especially when you're dealing with a wrestler who's not a submission specialist, right? Turn your back, right. you know, expose your back for a second to explode back to your feet. Might make more sense for Lindsay here. And no surprise, round number one, Chris Renteria winning round number one in all three judges' scorecards. Remember, we have open scoring here at Combate Global. Boy, has that made a difference here, Combate. Nice yeah, transition to mount. First time Renteria has gotten full mount. Now, what does he do with it? Is the question. Is the energy there? So one minute has gone by in round number two. The fighter as strong as Chris Renteria on top of you. Fresh, that's not where you want to be. Renteria, this is the opportunity. He needs to put an end to this fight right now. Up against the Howla, no real room to move for the young undefeated fighter from Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. Noah Lindsay's got to get his guard back and explode out of this position because he's doing nothing but eating punches right now. All right, Tania trying to go for the really naked if the opportunity is there, but Lindsay's so well grabbing in those wrists. Pushing downward. 
Active in his guard, from his guard in round number one, but round number two so far getting out scrambled. Three minutes left to go. Gotta find a way out here. Renteria has just been tenacious once again, stepping over the mound at exactly the right time. Oh. Yeah, followed by some short punches. Might be looking to get this one over with. I think they're coming in very heavy, those shots, Jimmy. Yeah, both hooks in. Body lock's not tight, though. No, you see the jujitsu mistakes from Renteria. He definitely yep. has the, 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 the scrambling, but positionally losing one of those hooks. Didn't really have his, his, his hooks in. Good transition to mount, however. Looks like Lindsay's starting to wear down a bit. I just want to point out how fast he made those deep. Have you seen the mat burn on Jerry's <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, he went right for it. That's one thing when you take him on a superior wrestler. At least make him spend some gas right. to get you down, right? Make it difficult. No difficulty but so far for Chris. Right, but, yeah, right, right to his butt. And I get it. He's a, he's a ground guy, but... Give me a little defense here. Uh, referee starting to take a close look at this one. Oh, that's over. It. Wow. A little bit of a surprise there. I didn't think he was eating those kind of punches. Yeah, yeah. neither did I. And Chris Lentavia kept the pressure on. Referee had seen enough. And it's a TKO win. First loss of Noah Lindsay's career. Now four and one. But Cristobal Rentaria moves to four and two. Off that ground and pound victory. Great stuff for the fighter from Tempe, Arizona. We will make it official when we come back. Welcome back to Combate Global as we enter La Jaula to make it official with a stamp on a great performance from Chris Rentaria. El tiempo oficial. Tres minutos y cinco segundos del segundo round. The official time. Three minutes and five seconds of round number two. And the winner by technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico. Cristóbal Retería! Win by TKO moves Cristóbal Rentaria to four and two in a dominant performance. Wrestling, mount, ground and pound. It was all working for him tonight. Right from the start, started off the fight. Not even a second went by, went for the takedown. And that was pretty much the story in itself. Just controlling the entire fight from the ground not allowing Lindsay to do anything. Sure, Lindsay did find some opportunities to lay in some submissions, but it was just too much. Renteria is just a powerful dude. And what I like is, you know, we saw that he was almost gassing on the first, somehow came in the second, just picked up the pace. The energy was there right from the start. Man, scary vicious dude inside my house. Man, no room to breathe at all for Noah Lindsay as he tastes defeat in his MMA career for the first time. And I see before we see the stats, give me some one-sided numbers, significant strikes, 86 to 13. Chris Renteria, takedowns whenever he wanted them. Also incredibly accurate, so much on the ground. More to come when we come back. Welcome back inside Univision Studios. Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman. We had a theme for the night, and it was experienced fighters trying to defend their, pay, their, their, their place against the up-and-comers. Uh, when it came to uh, Christina Pettigrew, she was the experienced fighter. It's a shame no one told Via Lobos. Yeah, right from the start, Jimmy Pettigrew coming in with the experience. Via Lobos, 1-0, but... Well, professional kickboxing fight. You would never know it that she was only in her second MMA bout. Boy, did she bring it, Jimmy Pettigrew. Just didn't pick up the speed. Was very conservative throughout the fight. Via Lobos, though, that jab, right timing, the hooks. Takedown thief is on point. Looked phenomenal in there about a, against a game opponent and Tina Pettigrew. And Jimmy, if I'm proud of Via Lobos, that just boosted up my self-esteem as being a mixed martial artist. Pettigrew also a physical beast. I mean, you stood across from her and did an interview earlier today. She is huge for this weight class. 
Uh, Mia Lobos never fought intimidated. She had no problem staying toe-to-toe -to -toe with a much bigger fighter. Stick and move was the game plan. Even landed an axe kick. You know how hard it is to land an axe kick, especially in, in MMA. But that just shows you how much confidence she has. The figure of the two, but wasn't whatsoever afraid or scared. Went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pettigrew right in the pocket. And boy, and, and the take on defense, that, that's what I'm really impressed about. And even in the clinch, because I even said, look, if Pettigrew were to take her to the clinch in the, in the ground game, that was going to make the difference. But Villalobos just didn't give her any opportunity. That's what happens when you control the range well on the feet, which she did. It never allowed Pettigrew to get that takedown timing that she wanted. She was forced to go for takedowns against the fence that didn't work. And when she got takedowns, they were always late in rounds, too late to be effective. A unanimous decision win for Claudio Villalobos. It isn't just about tonight. Her future right now, looking bright. Oh, how sweet it would be. Let's look at the difference there. 21 takedowns. Wow, good stuff for Villalobos. Yeah, but it wasn't the only great fight. It wasn't the only upset. We'll get to him right after this. Welcome back inside Univision Studios. Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman. Look, we've had a couple great cards here in Combate Global tonight. So much action. We had the upsets. We had the unthinkable happening, but... We keep rolling on Rodolfo Roman. Tell us about what's going on next week. Ah, Jair Perez, we know this man comes from a family background, taking Aguiluz from Chile. He'll be making his debut inside La Jaula. Aguiluz, Jimmy, left Chile, moved to Mexico with his girlfriend to train an Antrim gym. That's how serious he is about making that change and upping up his game in MMA. And we're going to see his debut inside La Jaula next week. Well, that's another thing we've seen tonight. Fighters from Chile making their mark. Uh, MMA becoming a universal. It isn't just about the United States and Mexico anymore. We will continue with more action right after this. Welcome back, Jimmy Smith, Rodolfo Roman. It's my favorite part of the night. I get to put Rodolfo on the spot. Some tough choices. Sure. Who's your performance of the night? I got to go to Choco Castillo. Got that victory. He's going to restart his, his career, man. And Villalobos, phenomenal. And Gomez, that movement, man, just really impressive. Oh, so everybody was great. Jimmy Smith, Rodolfo Roman, for everybody behind the scenes. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time in La Jaula.